Hero here from Ember Games with a review of Nier Automata, played on PlayStation 4, also available on PC. Nier Automata is the second in the Nier series, the first having been created by Cavia, both published by Square Enix. The thing that most people don't realize is Nier itself is a spin-off game of Square Enix's Dragon Guard series by Project Dragon Sphere, of which there are three. In a search to get the melee combat a little smoother in this Nier sequel, Square reached out to Platinum Games, makers of games such as Bayonetta and DMC. Automata continues the first game's ambition of giving you something new and or crazy around every turn, be it gameplay mechanic, environment, or story revelation, keeping gameplay fresh through its duration. There will be some minor video spoilers, but I won't give away story specifics and I'll keep the videos out of context. And trust me, to spoil anything in this game, you're going to need that context. Nier Automata is a story that takes place thousands of years into Earth's future, where all that remains of mankind is a small base on the moon. Aliens had invaded the Earth and created what is termed as machine life forms, forcing humanity to retreat. Humans in return create androids to send to Earth to battle the machines in an attempt to retake the planet. You fill the shoes of such androids. The game follows the fourth ending of the first Nier game, but enough information is provided to make it a standalone experience. While there's nothing extremely groundbreaking to science fiction lovers here, the game does present several contemplation points on what it means to exist, including a cheap stab at it, with one of the main playable characters being named 2B. Now, the key to Nier's story is that you have to, quote, finish the game three times. Now, that may sound monotonous and like a lot of useless work, but even though you're essentially starting a new game plus, the first playthrough is as Android 2B with her companion 9S at her side. The second playthrough is played as 9S, and you see the events from his point of view, as well as play with his hacking combat mechanic. The third playthrough shifts between 9S and a third party member I won't give away, and all of those events take place after playthrough 1 and 2, so New Game Plus is definitely a misnomer. All in all, I spent about 26 hours, but only did about 50% of the available side quests. In total, there are 26 endings, one for every letter of the alphabet, and that letter is highlighted in the ending's title. Now, a lot of these are failures for not following directions intentionally, and a couple are actually kind of fun. For example, as I'll explain in a minute, all of your equipment and stat upgrades come in the form of electronic chips that you place into a board. One chip that exists is the Android's operating system chip. If you pull that chip out, your game will end, credits roll, and you get the fatal error ending for T. You can pick right back up from your last save with the T on your save file record, and of course as a trophy for finding and achieving all 26. Nier Automata, at heart, is an action RPG but its combat and mechanics take many forms. This game has one of the most impressive first 45 minutes I've seen in quite a while, sending your characters to take out a giant mechanical life form. As you leave the station orbiting the Earth in a flight suit, you swoop in for a top-down shooter, transform for some twin-stick shooting action, land for some combo-driven melee using square and triangle, and finally face the robot using your pod as a gun while you dodge things including enemy fire that comes in in giant pink orbs, creating a third-person shooter bullet hell type of sensation. In fact, the game's view continues to shift throughout, giving you 2D platforming type sections and overhead ones while on foot as well. You'll find yourself switching to the shooter scenes periodically, and they bring a nice switch up to the action. Things you shoot in these forms, as well as combat on foot, contribute experience points which grant your character levels that remain the same regardless of which android you're controlling. If you can get your fingers to cooperate while on foot, you can aim and fire with your pod while doing melee combos, an experience I don't really remember having before. Seems in most games your character's either firing or swinging mutually exclusively. Where the first Nier dealt with magic and spellbooks, nearly all abilities and plot points are based in a mechanical logic. And while you still use melee weapons like swords and spears, the pod has a basic gun and you can equip firearms and support programs for various effects. When you die, you do lose all of your equipped chips, but in the Dark Souls fashion, if you can get back to your body and reclaim it in that life, you can get everything back. Near Automata is an open world experience, allowing you to come and go to most places once open through missions in that area. As mentioned, there are several side quests available to you that grant fairly significant rewards, including money, experience, weapons, and crafting ingredients. A few of the quests did feel a bit towards the monotonous side, so I think that's kind of overall why I chose not to partake in all of them. Quests will only be available for a certain time in accordance with your story progression. After your third playthrough though, a chapter select does open up showing you how many quests you completed in each of those chapters, allowing you to go back in for any unfinished business you may have missed. The world itself does feel a little small when compared to other games, but I would say that each area is fairly well used. You become thoroughly acquainted with the decimated buildings and deserts and forests to a point where you don't have to rely on a minimap constantly to get you to the places you know to go, like I find myself doing in a lot of other games. Most of your enemy types are based on the basic mechanic life form model, but come in different shapes and sizes with various accoutrements. 
After having finished the game, each of the game's boss encounters are pretty easily recalled, as either from a gameplay perspective or a narrative, each one made a pretty heavy impression. I mentioned crafting ingredients, these are used to upgrade weapons that you buy or find. Each weapon can eventually handle four upgrades, giving decent power and benefits, as well as uncovering a little history about the weapon. I think I only attained about 50% of them again, so you'll be looking high and low if you're trying to find them all. You can find a weapon for just about any playstyle, and with the battle-focused robots, notice the B and 2B's name, they can equip two weapons, letting you do more combinations to match your playstyle. The only issue I personally have with the upgrade system overall is how it felt like that Monopoly game at McDonald's where you get 10 of each piece on the board, but that one rare one of each color continues to elude you. There are several bottlenecks in the upgrade system in here, like finding titanium alloy early on, that hinder you from upgrading. But late in the game I did find an enemy that dropped it. But you're in for a pretty big farming experience. Near Automata gives you the tools to build your own heads-up display. The chips I mentioned earlier belong to several categories. One of lets you use your available slots on the board to display the minimap, enemy HP and levels, as well as items that appear on your map. You have to make the balancing choices though as you're trading off for increased melee and range damage, better drop rates, more experience per kill, auto heal, and many others. Chips can be upgraded by combining light types of the same level and paying a fee at a vendor in town. Near Automata as a whole looks pretty decent. Looking closely, some textures can seem a bit plain, but what it lacks for in high definition textures, it most often makes up for in atmosphere. Cutscenes where you see close-up of androids' faces is a little distracting as their lips don't come close to the words they're saying and their expressions are definitely at the bottom of the uncanny valley. But the freshness and uniqueness of the environment really make up in style for what's lost in resolution. The musical score of Nier Automata nears perfection in a game as I've never observed. The game has so many tracks and I think nearly every one felt dynamically built in layers so they could respond to that intensity or lack of in a given situation, bringing in drum tracks or choral lines at appropriate times. On top of that, my absolute favorite part is the hacking that you'll spend some of your second third playthrough experiencing. They made a chiptune track for nearly every song in the game. So when you go into the twin stick shooter little mini game while hacking, manipulating bits and bytes, whatever tune was playing goes right along with you. I recently got into an interesting conversation with Taylor Griffey, a freelance contributor for the website Joystick Mayhem, about storytelling in general, not just restricted to games. We were thinking about how stories are collections of moments, which caused me to reflect on how I observe, process, and remember them in all forms of media. I mean, stop and think for a minute about your favorite movies. I'm not just talking about ones with quotes you toss around, but if you had to write a short paragraph to persuade someone to watch a film or play a game, what you tell them. Now, my objective focus on games in my reviews is generally about individual mechanics or parts. With most games, I could give you a premise and probably tell you about the ending. Some games will pass on particularly cool moments, like, you know, I could recall 3 or 4 from Final Fantasy VII. Hell, I'd even give Halo a couple points there. When I sit down and think about Nier Automata, I could literally make an entire spoiler-filled video of individual moments that stick out and made so much of an impression on me, due to its narrative being juxtaposed against this hollow mechanical environment and my expectations of it, as well as its gameplay mechanic blending. I mean, even looking back at The Witcher 3, which is one of my favorite games of recent years, with such quality writing and content, I mean, there are one or two quests I'll describe to people, but just kind of give it that overall, the writing is of the highest quality. I mean, when you have so many highs, it can kind of start to blend together. As opposed to, oh my gosh, listen to point A, B, C, D, E, F. Nier Automata is a game about moments. I don't think I can emphasize enough just how well put together this game is. In 26 hours, I didn't find myself tiring of combat or trying to avoid encounters, due both to the pacing and the constant mechanic switching. The way the story unravels with its revelations keeps your attention as you go from answer to answer through its numerous plot twists. So many corners you turn bring you a sense of wonderment as these environments reveal something new. There's a lot of side content with connected NPCs that give you an even closer view of the world. The game's musical score, atmosphere, and narrative are interwoven together in a way that few games have yet achieved. I guess overall what I'm trying to say is that the game truly is a masterpiece of the craft. I know the game sold fairly decently in Japan, but hope its lesser known name can reach people in the US and Europe so that more people can experience this game, because it really is one you shouldn't miss. Now, I mean, if you're not a science fiction fan or enjoy a good story in your game, this isn't going to change your mind, but if you want to see an action RPG done right, it's right here. Rated as an action RPG, even though it can barely be contained with all its various mechanics, Nier Automata receives a 96 out of 100, with 50 being an average game. This is Jiro for Umber Games. Thanks for watching. Feel free to press that subscribe button to get more video notifications, or follow me on Twitter at Umber Games.